What's going on, guys? This is Tower Number Nine. We are going live here with a game of Star Wars uh, Unlimited, and this is a game that I haven't showed yet here on the stream. But it's a upcoming TCG from Fantasy Flight Games with a Star Wars theme. And we have uh, on the left is Tiny Grimes, and on the right is Trax. We are going to be um, we're going to be getting this game started imminently. So yeah, let's get to it. This is going to be live game, live commentary. And uh, I figured I'll, figured I'll show this game. So we have Tiny is running Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. So the way this works is in this game, your leader starts out as kind of a support piece that isn't on the field. And once you get enough resources, you can actually deploy him and he takes the field to fight potentially being knocked back to being a support piece if he's taken out. So we have Darth Vader on the one side here versus Luke Skywalker on the other. So with the opening move here, uh, Tiny Grimes plays a Death Star Stormtrooper, one cost, three, one. Uh, Trax brings out R2-D2, who is a one cost, one, four. And when played, you can look at your top card and, sh and choose to put it on the top or bottom. Uh, and so we saw Tiny played the trooper. Um, Trax played R2. Tiny used V, uh, or no, it looks like he looks like he did not use Vader's ability. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, they they started this uh, started this one off and. We have a Cloud City Wing Guard coming out. So both sides playing Sentinel units. So Sentinel is units in this arena can't attack your non-Sentinel units or your base. Um, so Trax plays the Cloud City Wing Guard, who is a 2-4 uh, Sentinel. And Tiny plays a Cell Block Guard, a 3-cost three 3-3 three, three Sentinel. Rather than attacking with R2, Trax is just going to claim the initiative. So in this game, the initiative token that you have here uh, it involves who's going to take the first action on each turn. Tiny decides to have his Death Star Stormtrooper attack the Cloud City Wing Guard. The Death Star Stormtrooper is killed. Three damage on the Wing Guard. Damage is permanent in this game, unlike some uh, other card games. So we do see him choosing to lose his unit to inflict some inflict some damage, and maybe he can uh, finish off the Cloud City Wing Guard using Vader's ping ability. Um, Vader has a one-cost ability where you exhaust him, and if you've played a villainy card, that's what that black icon means. It's one damage to a unit and one to a base. So with this Wing Guard having one life remaining, that's an opportunity, potentially, for Tiny to take him out with Vader. Trax plays a fleet lieutenant, 3 cost 3-3 three, three rebel. When played, you may attack with a unit. If it's a rebel unit, it gets plus 2, plus 0. He uses that to attack with R2-D2 at strength 3, thanks to the plus 2. And that actually takes out the cell block guard, leaving R2 still alive. But Tiny counters with a second cell block guard. Now, Trax is using Luke's ability for the first time in the game. One, uh, Pay one and exhaust. Give a shield token to a heroism unit you played this phase. So he uses that to put a shield on the fleet lieutenant. Tiny then uses Vader's ability to finish off the wounded wing guard. Mm, actually, it looks like he's he's reconsidering. Okay, he decides that he's going to let let the wing guard stay alive and instead use the ping to remove the shield. So in this mod, um, people are using these people are using these blue dice to represent shields. A shield basically fully absorbs one attack. So in this case, the shield absorbed just the one damage from the ping. But I think that Tiny decided, you know, this Cloud City wing guard, if it attacks, will just die to my trooper. And if I ping off the shield, the shield only blocked one damage instead of potentially blocking three damage later. I uh, I intervened there to remove a remove a life from the from the base there because Vader's ability, in addition to doing one damage to the unit, also does one damage to the base, and I believe the players forgot that. So on this next turn, Trax takes out the um, Trax takes out the cell block guard by trading with that fleet lieutenant. So if he had still had his shield from last turn, he would have been able to kill that for no damage taken himself. 
Um, Tiny plays the mighty super laser technician. Three cost, two, one. When defeated, you may put this unit into play as a resource and ready it. This is a really good card because get, getting that extra resource in play can mean that maybe Darth Vader is going to come out a turn earlier. And getting your leader on the field in this game is a very strong thing to do. Vader's ping ability then being used to kill the wing guard this time. And we still have five, uh, five ready resources here on Trax's side of the board, even though Tiny is almost tapped out. So let's see, let's see what's going to happen here. I think, I think the wing leader might be the most likely. So this guy is a 3 cost 2-1. When he's played, he gives 2 experience to another friendly rebel. The, the fleet lieutenant could be brought out, but it would, miss an it would miss an opportunity to use his ability because there isn't a ready unit to attack with. Luke's lightsaber could be equipped. Ooh, he goes with entrenched. Okay. So entrenched is an attachment. It makes it so that the unit can't attack bases, but it gives plus 3, plus 3. So... R2-D2, now a pretty mighty unit, quite frankly. And the wing leader also being brought out. Uh, when played, give two experience tokens to another friendly rebel unit. An experience token is a plus one, plus one. So we now see R2 with both entrenched and the plus one, plus one. He is plus five, plus five. So he's now a six, nine. And... I think this is. Uh, I think this represents Trax getting ready to try and kill uh, Vader as soon as he can. So with all these buffs on R two, once Vader comes out uh, onto the battlefield, R two D two is potentially going to be able to take him down pretty quickly. Interestingly, here we um, we do see that the Rebel deck is double blue. So it has in this game you have these two icons that you see on the right of the leader card. The blue one and the kind of white or goldish or whatever that is. Um, the blue one is vigilance and the light one is heroism. And you can you can include cards in your deck that share one of those icons. And you can also include cards from out that don't have those aspects, but they cost extra resources to deploy. So in this case, he's actually opted to play the Dago Boss Swamp, which is a another blue icon. So with two blue icons. His card pool is going to be significantly diminished, but there is one card that has a two blue icon requirement, the card Vigilance. It's a very strong card, so I think we're likely to see that coming out for this uh, for tracks in the future of this game. So right now, Trax is at six resources, as is Tiny, but Tiny sends his uh, super laser technician in, gets killed, and this now puts him up to seven resources, which means he can deploy Vader. Trax deploys Luke now on his leader side. It's it's important to note that uh, switching to your... Deploying your leader as a unit is actually free, so it tends to be a, a big swing here. And so we have Luke as a 4-7. Oh, man. Open fire being played here for four damage, killing the incredibly fortified r2 to prevent him from potentially attacking vader i suspect um we could see luke's lightsaber coming out for a substantial buff to luke i think that would be a pretty good play here we will have to see pezio in the chat says nice to see some uh star wars unlimited on twitch and i see has also followed thank you for the follow pezio and uh good to see you in chat yeah I figured uh, I figured putting some commentary up for this game would be cool. Incidentally, for any of the, you who are not familiar, this game is not out yet. The current it comes out sometime in 2024. There was a rumor that it will be in March, though that is not confirmed. And I think at this point, it's going to be an interesting. It's going to be interesting to see just what happens. But enough cards have been previewed that people are already playing on TTS. And I'm going to throw up a link in the chat to a Discord server where people have been coordinating to find games and discussing the uh, discussing Star Wars Unlimited and so on. So if any of you are not familiar with this Discord, um, I am going to try and throw the link in the chat. Oh, except it wants me to log in, which is a little awkward. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get this up. It'll take me, take me a sec, but I have the uh, link forthcoming soon. All right, back to the game here in the meantime. So 
We actually had a pass from Tiny. You can pass without ending the turn. He is worried about bringing out Vader here. So Vader on his leader side is a 5-8. Luke with his lightsaber is a 7 is a 7 8 so he is threatening to actually kill Vader and it looks like uh it looks like we had the wing leader make an attack and then actually the turn ended so Trax opted not to attack with Luke in order to keep him there threatening Vader Tiny did not deploy Vader and we went to the next turn so this is an interesting situation We see the wing leader making another attack into the base here. Just this basic 2-1 space unit is managing to do some damage. And uh, I have now added that link to the Discord server that people are using for this game in the chat on Twitch. So check that out if you want to uh, want to learn more. We do see the Imperial Royal Guard being deployed here. So this is a 3 cost, 3-4. Three, while you control an official unit, it gains Sentinel. And while you control Emperor Palpatine as a leader or unit, it gets plus 0, plus 1. Unfortunately for Tiny, he currently has neither Emperor Palpatine nor an official unit. So that is just a 3 cost, 3-4. Three, Tiny uses Vader's ability to ping the shield off of Luke and deal one damage to the base. I think the one damage to the base may have been forgotten here. Um, Luke is going to swing into the base, hitting it for seven damage and putting a shield token on Obi-Wan. So Luke's ability when he's on the field, on attack, you may give another unit a shield. So Obi-Wan Kenobi, a powerful sentinel unit, now has a uh, shield on him to absorb that first attack or instance of damage. Vader finally entering the field, and I have to pan the camera a little bit. Vader is a 5-8, and on attack, he can deal 2 damage to a unit. Now, the interesting thing here, Vader can actually kill Obi-Wan, so on attack occurs before the attack. So if he attacks and uses the on attack to ping off the shield, he can then hit Obi-Wan. It would be for 5, but he has General Veers on the field, giving other friendly Imperial units plus 1, plus 1, which would allow him to take out even the 6-life Obi-Wan in one shot. And it looks like that's just what's happening. So Obi-Wan is taken down. Vader disables the shield and takes out Obi-Wan. But when defeated, give two experience tokens to another friendly unit. If it's a force unit, draw a card. So we see two experience added to Luke and a card draw for Trax. And Luke is extremely strong right now. He's a... He's got nine offense. He's a nine ten right now. In addition to his shield ability, I think there's a good chance that we're gonna see Luke simply attack to take out Vader. Uh, he could then give a shield to his wing leader, protecting it from being pinged off by Vader's ability. Let's see what he does. Trax does have the initiative. Oh, but you know what? Actually, the Royal Guard veers as an official, so the Royal Guard actually is a sentinel and prevents Luke from attacking Vader. Oh, yeah, this is actually, this is not so bad for Tiny. Normally, Delane getting your leader out is quite negative in this game because the leaders can be so impactful. But in this situation, I think it may actually prove to be a good call. If he had played Vader on that earlier turn, Luke could have used this Fleet Lieutenant to easily take him out. He plays the Fleet Lieutenant now, taking out the Royal Guard. Shields the Fleet Lieutenant. Using Luke's... Uh, so Luke's on attack ability here is... Uh, one sec. Yeah, on attack, you may give another unit a shield token. So a shield token onto Luke. Um... Six health left for Luke. He can actually be taken down by Vader. So I think if I'm Tiny, I might trade Vader for Luke and use Vader's on attack ability either to take out the wing leader or to knock the shield off the fleet lieutenant.
Vader swings two damage to the fleet lieutenant, stripping off the shield, and then the um, he does he does indeed uh, take out Luke. So both of these leaders are now knocked back to their kind of support profile here. Uh, they go back to the their other side and are exhausted. And because they're exhausted, we won't see these action abilities being used. Ooh, and Trax brings out General Dodonna, kind of the rebel version of Veers. All other friendly unit rebel units get plus one, plus one. And this now means that Veers um, does not trade favorably with the fleet lieutenant and General Dodonna. Ooh, a Thai advance brought out here, giving two experience tokens to another friendly Imperial unit. And so General Veers, now a 5-5, five, five. the wing leader trades with the Thai advanced. And now Veers can actually choose to take out either of these units and stay on the field thanks to that experience. And it looks like he's going to take out Dodonna. Uh, Veers taking four damage only on one life. Trax takes the initiative. Let's see if we see another play here from Tiny. Looks like the basic Thai LN fighter uh, brought out onto the field. One cost, two, one in the space arena. You know, not the most impressive unit, but sometimes it's nice to just have another body out there and very good in the early game. Also can do some damage if the opponent doesn't have things that are relevant in space. One of the unique things about this game is that um, there's both the space arena and the ground arena, and the units are kind of separated between them. So you, you're not going to see that X-Wing deploying to uh, the planet, and you're not going to see the fleet lieutenant you know, going and shooting down a TIE fighter in space. Now we're going to see Trax playing something. Snowspeeder. Snow speeder conducting an ambush. Uh, when you, after you play this unit, he may you may attack it may attack and ready an enemy unit. Uses it to take out Veers, and it does take five damage. But with its six life, the snow speeder is still alive. It also has the ability to exhaust an enemy vehicle ground unit when you play it, but that didn't come into play because there was no imperial vehicle for it to exhaust. Looks like Tiny is going big here with the mighty Gladiator Star Destroyer, 5-6. Uh, when played, it can you give a unit s a Sentinel for the phase, and he gives it to himself. So a mighty unit now on the field for the, uh, for the Empire. And we see, oh, Luke's lightsaber, a second copy, attaching here onto the, um, onto the fleet lieutenant. So the fleet lieutenant taking up uh, the fallen Luke Skywalker's lightsaber and uh, the when played ability does nothing, but the stats are pretty real. So that that fleet lieutenant swinging for six damage now. Snow speeder gets pinged off by Vader's ability, but the uh, the fleet lieutenant swings for six damage and Tiny's looking low on life. And he decides to take the initiative rather than attacking. So in this situation, he could have attacked with his TIE Fighter. But with Trax tapped out, Trax would almost certainly take the opportunity to take the initiative himself, at which point he would be able to attack for another six with this fleet lieutenant before Tiny could bring out any sort of answer. And I suspect that Tiny here wants to get an opportunity to counter this fleet lieutenant before it makes an attack. Okay. Everything's ready to up. Fleet Lieutenant as a 6-4. But it looks like there is an answer on the way. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Emperor Palpatine on the field. When, uh, when played, deal 6 damage divided as you choose among enemy units. So that damage is going to take down... It's going to quickly take down the uh, Fleet Lieutenant and... Unfortunately for Trax, he's now left with an empty board. He has a big life advantage, but he's not in a great position when it comes to the um he's not in a great position when it comes to the board state. Play it looks like it's going to be a vanquish coming out here, defeat a non-leader unit, and it destroys that gladiator star destroyer. 
The TIE Fighter swings into the base there, and we see a Restored Arc coming out. This is a uh, fairly solid card. 2 cost, 2-3 two, Fighter. When it attacks, you can heal 1 damage from your base. Tiny activates Vader's ability, hitting the Arc for 1 and the base for 1. And I think... Oh, that's surprising. Okay, Trax claims the initiative. I was expecting him to use... Uh, I was expecting him to use Luke's ability to put a shield on that restored arc, but he opted not to, and we will see how that pans out. I guess he wanted to have the first play. I'm wondering if we might see him play this entrenched on the Emperor to make it so he can't attack. I'm not, sh I'm not sure, but we could see Trax deciding that he's just going to focus on space and try and block off the Emperor, give up the ground arena for now. On the other hand, the cards that he's drawn, he's he's drawn two strong ground units. So that does make the option of entrenching the Emperor to make it so he can't contest ground less appealing. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. It looks like he decides not to resource anything. So this game's resource mechanic, you can, use, you can convert any card in your hand into a resource, and you draw two cards per turn. But it, sometimes late in the game, when you already have a bunch of resources, we see players choosing not to add an extra resource. And as a result of those choices, um, we have eight resources available for tracks and nine for the uh, nine for tiny. A sentinel on the field, the vigilant honor guards. While this unit is undamaged, it gains sentinel. The problem is the emperor's a six six. He can just take this guy down in one swing. Oh, overwhelming barrage coming out give a friendly unit plus two plus two for this phase then it deals damage equal to its power divided as you choose among any number of other units so the emperor becomes an eight eight and then he can deal eight damage split across two units he does six to the honor guard and two to the uh, fighter takes both units out and now we are in big trouble oh and there is the entrenched on the emperor making it so he can't attack the base it makes his stats even scarier but it's going to block eight damage on this turn and so we will see how things progress. We might see some other units deployed for Tiny. We might see that tie attack, but Trax doesn't have a ton of options at this point. We'll see what he can draw into to try to get back into this game. General Veer is hitting the field again from Tiny. Very solid unit. Three cost, three, three. Other friendly Imperials get plus one, plus one. And then it looks like we're also seeing a Death Star Storm Trooper. One cost, three, one. Nice aggro unit. Three damage to the base from the tie now that it's buffed by General Veers. And it is looking like a tough situation here for Trax as Tiny continues to build up his board. Not, not, not an exciting hand there for Trax. He needs to he needs to draw some kind of removal, you know, maybe another copy of Vanquish to take out the Emperor there. And without something like that, the even though the Emperor can't attack the base, Veers and the Death Star Trooper can attack heavily. And there just aren't that many plays available for Trax. He can he can bring out the wing leader, he can play some of these ground units and just get him killed by the Emperor. It doesn't make a ton of sense. He's gonna play the he's gonna play the wing leader and it lose its ability does nothing. He doesn't have another unit to give the experience to. Uh Tiny decides to trade there. That, um Trax takes the initiative. Oh, and, and Tiny now left with a bunch of options, bringing out another one of those gladiator star destroyers and a TIE fighter. It seems like Tiny is playing kind of a ramp deck here. And he is now ramped up, and Trax, I think, did not quite get enough of an advantage in the early game. This is probably the last turn, unless Trax can, can pull a rabbit out of the hat here. Now, he does draw the removal that he needs to take out the Emperor with this Vanquish card, but I think there are now enough Imperials on the board that it might not matter. Vanquishing the Emperor, so that it, that does get the Emperor off the field.
There's still a fair few strong Imperials, but we could also see this snow speeder come out and take down one of the other Imperial units, so he is fighting back. But I think it's a little late. Gladiator Star Destroyer hits the base for six. Snowspeeder takes the field and is probably going to take out General Veers. Yeah, takes him out. Takes three damage himself, but he has now saved himself from death on board, except Vader's ability can still be used for another one to the base. Ooh, yeah, Overwhelming Barrage comes out. Yeah, and that's going to take out the Snowspeeder and give a unit plus two, plus two. That's the extra damage that Tiny needs, and his remaining units are going to be able to clear the board. So that is game. Yeah, interesting game here. We saw we saw Trax gain a substantial advantage early on in the game, but Tiny was able to hang on and ramp up, get some of those stronger units out in the late game, and ultimately take it. Matt, uh, Matt Shork says, thanks for streaming, dude. My hype for this game is building. Yeah, I feel similarly. Uh, I am, you know, game's not out yet. Probably doesn't come out for like six months or something. But I am already, I'm already excited about it. The card pool that's been revealed is already enough to do some deck building, play some different strategies. And this one's looking pretty cool. You know, fan Fantasy Flight Games, they're back, baby. Let's see how this goes. All right, and then uh, it looks like the players are going to go for a rematch, so I'm going to just keep streaming. Let's uh, let's take round two here. Looks like the same deck's being used. And let's take a look at what was resourced here. So Trax decides to resource... Oh, I can't peek. I thought, the, uh, I thought I was able to peek, but that's not the case. So to, so at the start of this game, you draw six cards and then resource two of them. And so the player's choosing what they're going to start with here. And then we're going to... looks like Trax has the initiative this time, and it's going to be C3PO on the field. So when he's played or when he attacks, you choose a number. Look at the top card of your deck. If it costs that number, you can reveal and draw the card. So R2-D2 and C-3PO have great synergy, as is fitting. R2-D2 lets you see the top card and choose to put it on top or bottom. C-3PO can then make a very accurate guess based on uh, what that card is. So kind of an early draw engine if you get both R2-D2 and C-3PO out. And on the Imperial side of things, it looks like we saw the Death Star Stormtrooper played, and then I think... Why does he have... Somehow he got the initiative. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. He also didn't use Vader's ability. That's interesting. Ooh, the, a uh, cell block guard comes out, preventing C-3PO from attacking the... Um, preventing C-3PO from attacking the Death Star Trooper. I think we might see C-3PO get, get Luke's lightsaber here. As silly as that sounds, I think it might be the best option here. Yeah, there we go. Luke's lightsaber attached to C-3PO, so... A lightsaber wielding C-3PO, now a 4-5, which is actually quite strong, will be able to take down this cell block guard pretty easily. And it could get a draw on the way. In fact, if he if he were to draw one cost... He says 3. It is, and it is not a three. If it had been a one, he would actually be able to play that card that he drew as well, which would be huge value. Looks like the Stormtrooper then trades for C-3PO, and I suspect then Trax will take the initiative. Yep, there's the initiative token going over to Trax's side of the board. So in a, so playing a unit is your action, or playing a card. Attacking is is your action. You can also pass, which just gives initiative back to your opponent. And then you can also uh, take the initiative, which gives you the initiative counter, but then ends your turn. If both players pass in a row, the, game, the turn ends. And if one player passes and then the other player takes the initiative, the, the turn also ends. All right, so they're going to draw up and decide what to resource. Let's see what we're doing here.
Oh, Trax, I think maybe did not realize that it was the uh, the next turn yet. So he he had not drew his stuff, and now he's gonna resource there. General Dodonna, or no, it's going to be the System Patrol Craft coming out here. So the System Patrol Craft is a 3-4 uh, space fighter. And it has Sentinel. I was sort of expecting Trax to play General Dodonna here, but maybe without other friendly rebels on the board, he thought it would be premature. General Veers taking the field for the Imperial side of things. Ooh, that's a nice play. By playing Veers, he's going to be able to use Vader's ability to ping the System Patrol Crafter 1, and then in a future turn, he'll be able to play this Imperial Interceptor to deal 3 damage to the System Patrol Craft and take it out. All right, so that system patrol craft might not be long for the world, although we could see it uh we could see it healed or buffed or something. I'm not sure, yeah, actually a, a vigilance here to kill veers and shield the system patrol craft might be sick so this is a this is the card that requires two blue icons to play efficiently. The only one previewed so far it's choose two effects. you can mill the opponent six cards, you can heal five. Oh, Vigilance. Yep, there we go. Vigilance to kill Veers and give a shield to the System Patrol Craft. So he chose defeat a unit with three or less remaining HP and give a shield token to a unit. And with the shields up, this Imperial Interceptor is no longer able to be played to take out the System Patrol Craft immediately. It would bounce off the shield. However, uh, Tiny can put that uh, Tiny can put that System Patrol Craft back into threat range if he pings off the shield with Vader's ability. And it looks like he's going to play Grand Moff Tarkin, a strong card here. When played, search the top five cards of your deck for up to two Imperial cards, reveal them, and draw them. So obviously that's some very strong card advantage. The downside is that he has bad stats for his cost, but it looks like he's going to grab two Cell Block Guards, so some basic Sentinel units to hold the line there. And then the other three cards are shuffled uh, and put on the bottom of the deck in random order. So we're now probably going to see an attack from the System Patrol Craft. Yep, three damage coming in. And Vader's ability will likely be used to ping the shield off the System Patrol Craft. Yep. And that System Patrol Craft now in position to be threatened by that TIE Interceptor again. We're probably just going to see initiative taken. And yeah, initiative taken by Trax. And players drying up. Big hand there for Tiny, thanks to the card draws from Grand Moff Tarkin. We are now at the level where Luke Skywalker can hit the field. Ooh. We could potentially see Luke go, go on the field and then use his attack to shield that system patrol craft again. But uh, he wouldn't be able to take both those actions. So there would still be a window where the Interceptor could come out and take down the patrol craft. The back and forth nature of this game, where each player's trade off, uh, where the player's trade off actions l lends itself to a lot of strategic options and considerations that wouldn't be the case in a game where you take your turn completely and then your opponent does. <clears throat> Looks like uh, Trax is figuring out what to do here. It is going to be deploying Luke. Luke on the field. I think... So now... So Luke on the field, 4-7. Uh, on attack, he can give another unit a shield. So if Tiny... If Tiny doesn't take down this system patrol craft immediately, Luke can attack, put a shield on it, and once again take it out of that interceptor's range. However, I think Tiny might want to play this resupply this turn, which would go into play as a resource, allowing him to then bring out Darth Vader this turn. Vader's epic action to deploy as a leader only occurs on seven or more resources, while Luke's is on six. So Tiny needs some kind of ramp to get out Vader on the same timing as Luke. He doesn't do it. Attacks the base for two. 
Wing Leader comes out, giving two experience to Luke. Luke getting buffed up here. Wing Leader, strong basic fighter here. And now Luke is actually in position to kill Vader with that Fleet Lieutenant buff, if Vader does see play this turn. Uh, Luke is a rebel and could come in with the uh, Fleet Lieutenant buff there, hit for hit for eight. Oh, it looks like he forgot to do his resources here. Oh, and there... Okay, so he's not going to go for the Vader buff. So he just goes in for the base. Uh, Fleet Lieutenant hitting the base for eight. And shield to the... to the Fleet Lieutenant. Okay, interesting. If I if if I were here, I might have gone for the assistant patrol craft attack first. Oh, there we see the resupply coming out, put into play as a resource. Now there's seven resources, and we're gonna see Vader on the field. Now the system patrol craft can still attack, but otherwise Trax is tapped out. Yep, attack for three from the system patrol craft. So lots of damage on Tiny's base this turn, but Vader is about to hit the field. And he can definitely cause some havoc. Cell block guard being brought out. And then I think we're going to see Vader. And Vader can potentially... Vader can potentially attack the base and use his ability to ping off the wing leader. He could use it to knock the shield off. Trax takes the initiative, and now we see Vader on the field as predicted. The new question becomes what he wants to do with him. So Vader's a very powerful unit. 5-8 on attack, he can deal 2 damage to a unit. So who is he going to attack? Yeah, so it looks like he takes down the fleet lieutenant here. So he uses the on attack 2 damage to knock down the fleet lieutenant's shields. And then the 5 damage is going to take out the fleet lieutenant's health. Vader takes 3, but is still alive. Now, ooh, this is an interesting position here for uh, for these players. Trax is now in a position. He can swing with Luke and kill Vader if he wants. And I think he probably wants... No, wait, no, he can't. He can't. He The cell block guard is covering Vader. Yeah, so this unit with uh this this kind of humble unit here with Sentinel is actually a big problem for Trax. It means Vader is almost certainly going to get a chance to attack this turn. Well, there is this strong removal card Vanquish. It doesn't work on leader units. So Trax opts to bring up a uh solid Sentinel unit of his own, Obi-Wan Kenobi. When defeated, give two experience tokens to another friendly unit. If it's a force unit, draw a card. However, Tiny has some strong options in hand. He could go for a removal play with the Ma with the bombardment or with the Emperor here. And Trax is out of resources. It's a tough situation. So, it looked like he was thinking that he could attack Tark, uh, Luke with Tarkin, but that's actually not possible thanks to the Sentinel there from Obi-Wan. General Veers on the field. Uh, Veers is up here. Other friendly Imperial units get plus one, plus one. Uh, System Patrol Craft comes in, hitting the base for three. Tiny's base is getting real low. I think he's going to be able to stabilize, but I don't know for sure. Ty advanced on the field. Two experience on Vader. So 
the TIE Advanced is kind of the Imperial version of the Wing Leader for the Rebels. So 3-2 Space Unit, and when it's played, it's going to give two experience tokens to another friendly Imperial unit, giving them to Vader. Vader is incredibly buffed now. He has plus one, plus one from Veers, and the two experience as well for plus three, plus three, meaning he's 8-11. Um, now, he is a little hurt from the... Um, he, he's a little hurt from the Fleet Lieutenant earlier, but he's still an 8-8, which is out of range to be killed directly by Luke, so tough situation. Wing Leader is going to trade with the TIE Advance. Vader could take down Obi Wan here, and he and he could if he attacks. Okay, so it's going to be a pass. Oh, so tiny tiny passes, maybe hoping to see what Luke is going to attack into, and Trax just claims the initiative, ending the turn prematurely with several units left to attack. I think Tiny's in a good spot here, though, because of his strong removal options in hand. We'll have to see how it goes. Vanquish killing General Veers. Overwhelming Barrage. Give a friendly unit plus two plus two to this phase, then it deals damage equal to its power, divided as you choose among any number of other units. That buffed up Vader at strength 7 uh, goes up to strength 9, deals 9 damage to Luke, and takes him from full to zero. And that is a hard hit for the... Uh, that's a hard hit, I think, for the Rebel player here. It's not over yet. C-3PO. Calls 2. Looks like he misses the draw again. I think he maybe should have attacked with the system patrol craft there, because I have a feeling that it's going to get taken out by that interceptor. Yep, there we go. Ta Imperial interceptor, when played, it deals three damage to a space unit. And that could have been three more damage to the base from Trax if he had attacked with the patrol craft earlier, but it didn't pan out. And now he he really is in trouble. The Obi Wan uh, Obi Wan takes down the cell block guard. Ooh, and taking the initiative there. Interesting, interesting stuff. He's maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure why he's not attacking. Uh, I think. It might be better to try to press the advantage here, but I could be wrong, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Takes the initiative to go first in the next turn. Drawing into even more removal there on Tiny's side of the board, we see a another one of those overwhelming barrages plus a simple open fire, both removal cards, and the Emperor is still present. I think I think Trax is in trouble here. Another overwhelming barrage. Oops. I accidentally uh, accidentally spun the camera there, guys. Sorry about that. Let's get back. So that is going to... That's going to do a lot of damage. So once again, Vader gets plus two, plus two, and then deals nine damage divided between Obi-Wan and C-3PO, kills both of them. And now it's an empty board again for our uh, for our rebel player. General Dodonna comes out, but he's not going to have a lot to do, I think, because he'll just be he can just be taken out easily here. Yeah, open fire, removing Dodonna. Deal four damage to a unit. And I accidentally hit the space bar and reset the camera again.
Okay. Well, it's looking. Uh, it's looking. It's looking grim for tracks, despite the big differences in life. He brings out a fleet lieutenant who doesn't have a lot to do here. TIE Fighter comes out on uh, on the Imperial side of the board. Trax takes the initiative, and now I think we're going to see a lot of attacks into the Rebels. Vader hits the base for nine. And two to the Fleet Lieutenant. And Tarkin trades with the Fleet Lieutenant, clearing the board for the Rebels again. And then the Imperial Interceptor hitting for another three. All of a sudden, those life totals are near equal. And Tiny has a powerful board compared to what we see from Trax. So I think I think this game is going to end up being much like its predecessor, where Trax had a substantial life advantage early, but couldn't necessarily close it and then started to struggle a bit in the late game. N not over yet we'll see what happens but at this point it definitely looks like the advantage is with tiny grimes system patrol craft being brought out that might buy him some time in the space arena three four sentinel Tiny playing the tie advanced here. Two more experience on Vader. Darth Vader is really a powerhouse here. Nine twelve on attack, you may deal two damage to a unit with those experience buffs. I I don't really see the rebels stopping this. I have to say. Yeah, so Vader hits the base for 9, uses his ability to hit the system patrol craft for 2. Then he can trade the uh, TIE LN for the damage system patrol craft and get the interceptor through to the base, dealing 3 damage, and I think that's it. I don't really know what could save uh, Trax now. And a Imperial Emperor's Royal Guard takes the field. So I think that's basically a checkmate type situation. Even if he plays a, a strong sentinel unit to either lane, Tiny can just attack in the other lane to the base and end the game. So uh, another victory for Tiny Grimes and his Vader ramp deck, I believe. General Dodonna uh, gives a defiant four damage to the base. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be that's going to be that tracks uh, looks like tiny brought out the emperor there or maybe was just showing that he had that and there just isn't the um, isn't the opportunity that uh, it isn't the opportunity that tracks needs. All right, so once again, the uh, the tiny Grimes and his uh vader command kind of ramp build was successful had some major downsides in the early game but did manage to get those late game heavy bombardments and stuff out and close out the game that way interesting situation but uh yeah that's the, that's the game mm -hmm. All right, guys, I think that's going to about do it for this stream. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in and checking out this Star Wars Unlimited gameplay with commentary. I'm hoping to do some more of these streams later and also maybe make some videos and articles for this game. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Might be some more content coming on TowerNumber9.com or on this channel uh, on Twitch and on Tower Number 9 on YouTube. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys later.